but today's video is not going to be like any other video that we have done. It's a kind of behind the scenes for you guys to see what a day in the life looks like on this channel. <laughs> where we take a break from doing the traditional kind of videos, more fun videos to now we're getting serious. It's the last tournament of the year for the PBA, the Tournament of Champions. So I'm getting ready as best as I can to make sure that I make it through the PTQ. And then, you know, whatever else happens after that happens. But we're working on physical game stuff today and obviously some spare shooting. So I'm gonna tell you guys the three things that I'm working on today. The first thing that we're gonna dive into one of the biggest things that I've needed to work on, that I have been working on, is having my first step smaller. That way the body doesn't transfer forward too quickly. So that's what I'll be working on for a couple shots to show you guys. I have my starting position of my body not back so that I don't fly forward. I'm more in the middle. That's where the pressure is. All right, so as we're setting up, I set up straight and then I bring the pressure to the middle or to the front of my feet. That last shot was pretty good, so I'm gonna make sure to do it again and make sure that I'm keeping that first step nice and short. Another good shot. Good result. So for me, tour starts in 16 days, so I'm trying to keep it really simple because pretty much wherever I'm at is where I'm at. I know I can change some things, but pretty much going two weeks before, I'm not gonna try to change anything major. I am still working on getting my timing back, which is just helping me not pull down from the top of my swing. And to do that, I'm focusing kind of like with Nate. My weight is a little bit different, but I'm trying to just focus on keeping my first two steps really slow and short because I tend to get them fast. And then it keeps my third step from getting longer and my fourth step from getting shorter. And it kind of causes the opposite where my third step gets short and my fourth step gets long. So I'm just really making it very simple. I'm not really paying too much attention to where the weight actually is. Just trying to sit in my hips like as if I was going to sit in a chair and just keep the first two slow and short. That was pretty good. Typically, every time I get my feet fast, it's you do want your feet to progressively get fast, but when they're fast in the beginning, especially for me, with my long arms, my long legs, I pull down from the top because I do have a double joint in this too. So I have to be even more careful about my timing and pulling from the top because even if I get my timing good, my footwork and everything can really dictate if I still pull down from the top because I do have a little bit more lag than someone typically would just because my arm does have the double bend. And obviously once you put a 15 pound weight in it, it makes it even worse at the top of my swing. So the second thing that I'm gonna be working on is my right shoulder not firing quickly in front of my left, trying to keep that back, along with the left arm and left side of my body staying stronger. The big thing for me is, I don't know if it's when I get too excited or just when I get into a rut, I tend to want to help hook the ball. And when I help hook the ball, my shoulder fires in front. And I try to create rev right that way when that's not the proper way to do it. So we're focusing on allowing that ball to come down all the way through and then rotating my hand when the ball catches up to my ankle. And that was a bad example right there. That's why we're working on stuff. There we go, that was a really good one. Really, really good shot. So, just need to keep that mindset, that mentality, that smoothness when I go in a competition. Just allowing my body to do the right thing, but that's usually one of my biggest issues is I try to make the ball hook with my shoulder and my arm comes through it from the top really aggressively. So we're gonna try to be smoother for the rest of practice, get that going. And then we're gonna dive into number three, which is probably the most important. So the next thing that I'm working on, which just kind of goes along with everything I'm doing with number one, is that when I get into my slide, I'm digging in with my hips and not letting my chin go forward, which basically means that when I'm digging my core step into the line, I'm trying to get my knee to go towards the weight as quick as possible and not just let it drag over. And that's what's gonna help me create that separation to have more room and have a longer flat spot. So that way it'll help me not hug it from the top of my swing as well. <laughs> oh, 
was pretty good. I definitely feel like my timing could have been a little bit better, but as you can see, even though my timing wasn't as good as I wanted, I still kind of got to the line exactly where I wanted. It could dictate where my hand's not as aggressive at the bottom, meaning I did get my fingers quite underneath it, which is comes from my timing. So now I'm gonna try to put them both together, but mainly still make the focus on that knee driving to the line in my forceps. Okay, now it's about if I can repeat that because that was pretty good. I got my hand underneath it. My timing was pretty good. Now I'm naturally still gonna have a little bit later timing. I think that's very common for women. There are some women that are able to start the ball on time, but in general, most people do have that lagged late timing. But me, it gets really, really late where I'm just pulling down and I can't even get my ball off my hand because I'm so late in my swing. So another part for me is tricking my brain into feeling that lag and knowing that it's normal because I did create a lot of bad habits when I was going through my back injury. So I was doing things to keep my back from getting hurt and kind of like baby it. So now I'm not used to feeling that lag. So sometimes I get there at the right spot and I still get there and I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm really behind, but it's actually what I need. So that's another part of it, which was the difference between that first and second shot was that the first one, Everything was pretty good when I got there, but I kind of hesitated and still pulled down and let my shoulder rotate early. Whereas the second one, I was a lot better and letting it just fall through naturally. The very last thing, most important, if you want to make any type of cuts anywhere, spare shooting, getting the spare ball to feel good. I will probably be drilling a new one, but we're going to see how the rest of the day goes. So I'm going to do a refresher. Probably, I really just need to hit the 10 pin the 3610 and a washout. Those are the ones that I've been struggling with a lot. I'm gonna run through those three spares for you guys, kind of explain where I stand and what I look at. So with the 10 pin, I'm gonna be standing 29, making sure that my body is angled towards that. And I'm gonna be looking around 19. Beautiful. We're not gonna miss those this week. I think we've got it down. So now we're gonna shoot the 3610. I will be standing on 30 and I'll be looking 20. I'm just trying to be nice and normal like my strike shots. Beautiful. My tendency when I shoot spares, I get into competition, I really like to throw it a lot harder. I think that's just in general, you know, what everyone was taught as a kid and you're supposed to throw it really hard, that's not the case. Really trying to work on that. Try to be nice and soft. So now we got the wash out here. I'm gonna try to do the same exact thing, be nice and comfortable. I'm gonna be standing 18, angling my body a little to the left, and I will be looking at 18. part is pretty simple it's just keeping my elbow in and it just comes from do, when I do get to the top it's very easy to when you create that lag and feel it there to want to feel like you want your elbow to come out and create the hook versus letting your fingers stay underneath it and that is I think the most difficult part of being a bowler is that understanding is that you are not throwing the ball you're rolling the ball so the more you're able to actually keep your fingers underneath it and feel like you're doing less the more you're actually going to do so that's what I'm gonna be focusing on this shot that was pretty good. I liked where my elbow stayed, but I'm not too happy about my hand turning a little bit early. I was still trying to do some of the work. So that was like a, a seven out of 10. So we're gonna try to make it a 10 out of 10. That one was like okay. That one was still like an eight. My hand was good, my elbow was in, but my timing wasn't the perfect. So on this one, I'm really gonna make sure I keep that tempo right and just feel the lag at the top of my swing. That one was good. That was what I wanted. As you can see, I really accelerated at the bottom. That is the biggest thing and a lot of bowlers don't realize they're doing is as soon as you decelerate at the bottom of your swing, anything you did from the start to the foul line doesn't matter. You know, even if your timing was good, your footwork's good, if you get to the bottom and you don't just allow your swing to fall into that slot and come through naturally, you won't be able to throw the shot correctly or accurately at all.
For the first part of practice, we normally focus on, like we kind of just talked about, all the little things that we're really trying to focus on. And then it obviously is important for us to be able to apply them. So then we do go ahead and bowl a game or two to just try to get our feet under us and have a system of how we judge your shots. And now I think that is the most important thing that takes bowlers to the next level, the difference between just an amateur bowler and someone that is able to bowl on tour, even bowl local tournaments at the higher level. It's just that ability to know what is a good shot and what is a bad shot because you're not going to be able to do everything perfect so it's about that combination of knowing your game well enough if the shot was good enough if you hit your mark did you put the right rotation on it and all that stuff is important when you actually go to bowl so the best way to prepare for that is obviously to do it in person while you're still practicing and pretend like you are at a tournament but also still have those things that you're focusing on in mind Okay, so I did like that shot. It was a little bit slower. I have been sitting for a little bit, which is something I do want to get better at as sometimes that happens on tour where we do have a little bit of downtime. So we have to sit for a little bit before the next game. So as you can see, that's something I need to work on. So I did like my tempo and my timing, but my footwork was just not in tempo with what I actually wanted. So the timing was good with my push away, but my tempo was not. Now this is what I'm talking about is like rating the shot is if I would have had my tempo okay, I actually hit the mark I wanted to and I probably would have actually struck. Oh, am I gonna get it? About an 8 out. Yeah, I give myself credit. That was a 9 out of 10. I don't know where to stand on this lane, so I'm just going to stand in the same spot. But focusing on stuff that we've been working on today. That's about a 7.5, I would say. Just because I got to the end and I felt like I up hit it. I could have slid just a little bit more than I wanted to. Everything was okay at best, but it was a 7.5 really just because I kind of drove up. My head went up and kind of updated so. So obviously the second part of this is because I didn't like what I did on the last shot, which was my tempo not being the greatest, but my timing good. We're obviously gonna focus on that for this shot. That one, I, again, I hit my mark, but I turned my hand. <laughs> Someone needs to work on their spares. <laughs> pretty good. I, I give it like a nine. I still kind of tugged it with my tongue. I tugged it with my tongue. Oh. Eight and a half only because I felt like I tilted it a little bit, but the line was good. It's important to pay attention and practice and do your pre-shot routine and make sure that you're focused. I went high the last time on the plane. And that was absolutely terrible. Nice little three out of 10. What'd you do? Right shoulder fired in front, decelerated. Not very good. I like liked it, but I can't tell if because it felt so different, I want to give it like a lower number, but I think I want to say that was like a nine and a half. Only because it felt different, but like I did what I wanted. Okay, that one was definitely a 10. That was good. Why do you think you left a 10 pin? I threw it a little too firm. And I'm also throwing like, I'm throwing a hybrid, but I definitely don't mind it. It was a really good shot, all really good. It was probably one of the better ones. Nine and a half. actually really like that. I was smooth. I dug in with my foot. I just didn't quite get my fingers underneath it. So 
my elbow probably popped out a little bit, so I was a little bit flat on it, but not bad. Nine is still good for an okay shot off my hand. That was like a six. We're gonna throw a better one on this lane. really good that's another nine and a half but wow he told me to film it yes y'all need this this one's very good eight and a half so i got it right but it still felt pretty good i really like that one rolled it a little bit so that's why the 10 was almost late but I did like that. Yeah I deserve that. I didn't and that was like a nine but it's just because I didn't like how I got into the line. I didn't quite drive my knee to the floor. I'm gonna give that a zero because I fouled. Is that a nine because you got nine? Sorry guys, I'm like almost gonna fry out to be honest. Don't do you. it. But it was about an eight and a half, nine. The only reason that I say that is just because I caught it a little bit and it was like inside a target. The last two shots were really good. I just hated that I fouled on that one. There's nothing more than like annoying than fouling, so. We're working on it. Okay. Even though that was a flat 10, I really like that. I really felt like I got to the line, everything was smooth, my hand. I definitely could have put more on it, which I'm still working on. That's just like a release thing. But as you've seen in our other video where we show you how to hook it, like the release part can easily be fixed by fouling out. But all the stuff getting to the line, I didn't like. Nine out of ten, but I'll take it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you guys a little bit. Just remember that if you want to do well in competition, you have to practice like you're in competition. You can't just wait to get to competition to figure out what is going wrong. I know some people say it's hard to practice like you're in competition, but that is what the people at the highest level of every sport do. They come in every day as if they are putting everything out on the line, just as they would if they were going to a tournament or going to their game, whatever it is. But you just have to tell yourself that every shot matters. Remember, it's quality, not quantity when you're practicing. And drum roll, please. Okay, also, I don't know if anyone's told you lately, you need to protect your balls.